everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my most favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose. I love comic books. I love talking about them. I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the Marvel fan site that'll have plot synopsis and character bios for this issue. Bob Layton continues as Penciler. And here we have a, a cover of his. At last, the X-Men Strike Back. This, of course, is from 1984. And we've got the X-Men uh, coming through. We can see Dr. Octopus, uh, one of the Wreckers in here. They got Iron Man, who at this time, Iron Man was... Jim Rhodes, not Tony Stark. Of course, then we have uh, Spider-Man and Captain America here with Reed Richards fallen. Um, Dr. Octopus is here in the middle. Volcana. And I can't tell who anybody else is, but I know this is... Th is it Thunderball? Anyway, we've got the cover here signed by Bob Layton with Bob Wyatt Although Bob does not do the insights... But that is, of course, John Beatty, who will continue on as the inker. So, The Battle of the Four Armies is the title. And Reed Richards says, I should have known. I should have suspected this. And Captain America says, what is it, Reed? What does this mean? Love the screen tones being used here. I'm a huge fan of screen tones. And Iron Man says, look at the size of that thing. It takes up the whole sky. And Hulk says, even though it's still millions of miles away. Uh, I doubt it's millions of miles away. But um, we got our credits here nice and small. Almost like it's not even uh, worth mentioning it. Just here on the corner. Jim Shooter, Bob Layton, and John Beatty. Jim Shooter is editor-in-chief, but he ha himself had a mandate that editors could not edit themselves. So he actually did have um, Tom DeFalco editing him. So, And then we can see all the rest of the superheroes kind of looking back. Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, Hawkeye, and She-Hulk. I have a Secret Wars playlist where I started this from the beginning with issue number one. And so, Galactus is bringing his home. That is not millions of miles away. <laughs> it's like right there in Earth or in the planet's orbit. It's still big, but not, <laughs> not millions of miles away. So, um, so, Reed continues. He must have summoned it from the far side of the universe, but why? And Ben Grimm says, any for our health, son. Maybe it's a present for the Beyonder. And uh, Spider-Man says, it's as big as a whole solar system. Wow. Um, but what? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Jim Shooter, I, I, I don't know. I know what he's trying to do, but it's not being... Um, done in the art. Um, it's not millions of miles away, and it's not as big as a solar system. Um, because if it was as big as a solar system, this planet would be a speck. You know, then you can say as big as a solar system, and then you'd see the sun, like, as big as this, and, um, the planet would be a little speck, so... Um, but as a kid, I guess you don't really notice it. So, all right. And we have the alien. Is it Saji? I believe it is. And she's saying something. And Johnny Storm says, I don't know what you're saying, pretty lady, but I can tell you're afraid. <sighs> oh my gosh. Bob Layton drew, um, Johnny Storm like a kid, like Franklin Richards here. So, um... She says something, and um, Johnny says, 
If only I could explain to you what's going on. Not that we can do anything about it. Calm down. It'll be okay. I hope, he says. And Thor looks on. And so Johnny says, if only I could talk to you, but you don't speak English and I sure don't dig your lingo. I guess I'd start by thanking you for fixing up my busted ribs, but I think we can have a lot more than a doctor-patient relationship. So part of the side effect is that she kind of makes people fall in love with her as part of the healing process. And Johnny says, hey, where are you taking me? Ah, uh, look, it's not that I'd mind, but... This is a heck of a time to duck into the parlor for some R and R, meaning rest and relaxation. And she says something again in her in her language, and they come in. And Johnny says, "You're going to fix us both a drink, is that it? Hey, you're one fast mover, lady. If that's Pepsi Cola in that bottle, make mine a double. I can use a a good stiff belt about now. So." Um, man, he must be used to it. He's not even freaked out a little bit. And so he says, vapors, you want me to inhale this stuff? What is it? Okay, I trust you. Huh? Smells sweet, but strong. And again, she says something in her language here. Now that means shut up and breathe, jerk. I can tell. Hey, this is a, a weird. I feel like my mind is opening up like a book. And so... And so we get a uh, brief explanation as to um, what is happening here. And it says here, suddenly the images in his mind's eyes are here to behold. She witnesses his memories of the recent past. She sees those who are brought with him to, uh, with him, teammates. And of course, we get everyone's name, allies. Uh, some whose allegiance he holds in doubt. And so we got the X-Men here. And then one he knows as an enemy, which is Magneto. She sees those who were brought in a separate vessel, evil men possessing awesome power, and there's everybody. Their leader, a man he had believed to be dead, the most fearsome enemy of all, which is Dr. Doom, and a cosmic force given form as a uh, living being, the planet eater, the majestic dreadful entity who looms over the village, standing upon the mountaintops, whose home ship fills the sky. And so we're going to get a bit of exposition about everything that's going on with the planets getting assembled and then the Beyonder speaking and then the fight, the holding of the mountain. So we're getting basically a recap. Every issue could be somebody's first. So about Saji uh, healing her. And so we're all caught up now. So... Kind of skip those because, again, I have a playlist and I'm not going to make this video even longer by reading all that. So Johnny says, that's neat. Um, it was like touching souls. I saw it in your mind, too. You know, I, and I liked what I saw. I know your name now. I caught it. Uh, and so she calls him Johnny. And she says, I love you, too, Sa Zashi. And so that's what... Uh, she says here, Zaji, Z and he's like, yeah, so, so Johnny's in love with her, but guess what, so is Colossus, because he healed her too, so she's got, uh, he's got those same feelings, now, I do have an X-Men playlist, and although I'm not quite here in, in where this is, I'll be there soon, because I, uh, do X-Men five days a week, posting a video, of X-Men and reading order and eventually we will get to this. So he's in a relationship with Kitty Pride on Earth. Kitty Pride is not here at this time. And he's like, I wonder where she is now, what she is doing. I would give anything, anything just to know if my little Katya is safe and well. And so he's thinking about Kitty, who by the way is uh, a bit of a young child here. And he's thinking kind of we're getting a, also a bit of exposition um, about the Beyonder here and uh, Professor Xavier. Colossus, come at once and startles him. He's like, uh, yes, Professor X at once. So um, Professor X is walking. We actually saw that after the brood saga 
his legs were healed. And as I mentioned before, we still haven't arrived to Mohawk Storm. But um, we should be there in a couple of weeks. So, um, Magneto says, how quickly they respond, Xavier. You have trained them well. And Xavier says, they are slower than I am content with, Magneto. Although I'd like to say Magneto because it is Magnet. So you had to know it would be Magneto. But people just say Magneto. But it shouldn't be. And so we get uh, Nightcrawler, Storm, and of course Wolverine. And then here is Colossus. And then way back here is Rogue. So Wolverine says, "What's uh, we're here. What's the rush? And Xavier says, that will become evident very soon, Wolverine. Please retract the dome, Magneto. Ha, see? Magneto. And so they're like, what is it? And of course, they see Galactus's little home. And so uh, Richards says he grabbed the information from Reed Richards. Um, which, by the way, throughout all this time... Uh, Professor X wasn't the kind of person that did that, but I guess this is kind of an evolution of his character where he's just pulling the information that he needs. Um, and so, and Cyclops, they're all kind of just shot. And Cyclops says, if I hadn't seen the Beyonder destroy an entire galaxy, I wouldn't believe this. But now I guess it's getting easier to accept the impossible. And Colossus says, no, it isn't. And Rogue says, what are we going to do? And Magneto says, you, Rogue, and the others will go now and prepare a ship. We may have to move quickly against Galactus. If, as Xavier and I fear, this event foreshadows hostile actions on his part. In the meantime, Xavier and I shall try a more subtle approach. You heard me. Go. And Wolverine already has his claws out. Since when do you give the orders? And Storm is like, I am leader of the X-Men. And Cyclops is like, that's right. It's very... It is a bit silly, but it's all right. This this comic book was aimed to sell toys. So, And Cyclops thinks, though with stakes this high, perhaps I should be, given my experience. But during this time... uh. Cyclops was on his honeymoon, and when he took off the first time, Storm was given the leadership. So, and then uh, screen tones again. Um, and Xavier says, Listen to me, my X Men, until further notice, I shall give the orders here and in the field. Now, please do as Magnus said, there's no time for dis discussion. And Cyclops is like, All right. And then he thinks, For the moment, anyway. Um, and Xavier continues here. You must be careful, Magnus. Imperiousness for the sake of expediency is not wise. And Magneto says, let us, uh, let us get on with it, Xavier. So, and now we've got, of course, the bad guys here. Um, so, um, I don't have all their names. I know this is Molecule Man and uh, Volcana. We got the Absorbing Man. And is it the Wrecker? And then um, one of them is Pile Driver and the Bulldozer. I don't know. We'll get to them here. So um, Molecule Man has the huts, the hots for Volcana. So, um, Molecule Man is telling him about, um, life before his accident and how kids used to pick on him. And, of course, she's like, oh, you poor little thing. And then the Wrecking Queue, a crew, and the Absorbing Man are kind of telling stories, um, about their criminal ways. And so, they... They go, oh, here comes the milksop and his cow, Romeo and Guernsey. Moo. Now, of course, she's an overweight, although not terribly big, but she's a little bit bigger than um, your your standard uh, superheroes. And he's like, all right, let's go. Oh, let's get out of here, says the Molecule Man. 
and Volcanus like the scum. Um, and he's like, my therapist said not to react. Let's just go by ourselves. Um, and then these guys just continue. Uh, and he said, nerd. And he's like, who said that? And they're like, uh, what about it? I'll show you what about it. And so she slaps him and, um, look at, uh, here we have Titana, Titania. And uh, she's like, I can't believe how Volcana mothers that little wimp. The mighty molecule man. Ha. And so. And. Um, ah, God, I don't know who they. I wish. I wish they. Uh, see, they already used their names here. So I I just don't remember. Okay. So I think Pile Driver and Thunderball. Um. Bulldozer is the guy with the uh the guy right here in the in the corner here. That's uh Bulldozer who keeps they, they keep putting him in the background. And so and Pal Driver says, You filthy fat bag, I'm going to you won't do anything because I control all molecules and I'm the most powerful person in the universe. So there. Is that so? Come on, guys. And let's rearrange his face molecules, guys. And they're like, oh, nice day. A little cloudy. <laughs> so none of them go to help. And so he makes his suit to be uh, metal-like here. And he ends up falling. And then she uh, stomps his head into the mud. And they're in Molecule Man's like, do any of you have anything to say? And they're like, nope. So, all right. And Molecule Man is like, no, sir, Mr. Molecule Man. And so they all they all say the same thing here. And he creates a chariot, and they all kind of go away. And so Titania takes off that tree, and she's like, I would have ripped him in half. Meanwhile, they're trying to get the poor guy um, out here. And so suddenly they stop, and they take a look at... Um, um, oh my goodness, too many characters to keep track of. Galactus's ship, and uh, Thunderball says, where's Doom? He'll know what that thing is. It might even be his doing, he says. So, but alas, Doom is watching uh, himself there. At last, Galactus's home has arrived here, as I knew it would. As his plan became clear to me, so do my own plans crystallize. Timing will be critical. Attention servitors of doom, prepare yourself for battle. From the instant uh, uh, from this instant on, you're all on red alert. You shall be ready to strike at a moment's notice. Fill me and you shall be utterly destroyed. And then here comes the enchantress wanting a word with him. And doom says, my orders were clear enchantress. You would do well to obey immediately. And she says, you cannot deceive me, Doom. I sense the odds against us, and I am afraid. So, so she offers him love, and that she can fix his face. And uh, Doom is like, my face? You could restore my face. And she says, easily. And he says, no, I know enough about sorcery to realize the hidden price of such a feast. Save your tricks, Enchantress. You will need them, and every ounce of your power. Uh, you possess in the coming battle. But see, she's a coward. And she's like, please do my beg thee. I don't want to die. I cannot imagine what it is for a mortal face toward an ult ultimate death. And he says, are you finished? And she says, you shall regret this. You have your orders, Enchantress. Be gone. Very well, madman. It is done. And Dr. Doom is like, um, saying madness pretty much drives him. And he does not fear death. And so now back to Magneto's lair. Xavier's trying to contact um, Galactus or probe his mind, but he can't. Magneto's trying to help him by trying to give more power to Xavier, but it's just not working. Johnny guesses that Magneto, or that, sorry, that. Uh, Galactus is going to try to eat the planet. Reed tells him uh, that he would like to try to speak with um, Galactus. Cap says they can't afford to lose him, but 
um, that just to be careful. And so here comes uh, Reed Richards and says, Galactus, Galactus, uh, Galactus, Galactus. Uh, and then he says, he's completely oblivious to me, but I must reach him. Listen to me. I think I know what you're planning and it's your, and it's madness. It will guarantee your death as surely as ours. You know this. And then Magneto's here. It's no use. We're like gnats to Galactus. Even at rest, his mental defenses are far too much for us. And Magneto is like, no, I'm no insect. He must acknowledge us. So... If we must, we'll batter our way through. And they're like, Magnus, no, you're causing a surge. And look at Galactus just kind of like um, indifference to all this. And Reed's like, there's another way with you. We can approach the, the beyonder. And then Reed notices that he glanced away and then he goes, why? And then, of course, he shoots toward uh, Magneto's base here. And then um, he goes, he noticed me, but he's forcing me back with his telekinetic burst. No, please don't hear me out. And he gets back and Cap asks what happened. And um, Reed explains, whatever disturbed Galactus aroused him sufficiently to make him aware of us as well. And uh, Spider-Man's like, well, at least you tried. Um, and Cap is like, if you're okay, then no harm done. And Reed says, you don't understand. We're in incredible danger now. Galactus is pointedly aware that potential pests, us, are near at hand. And Iron Man says, so? He's going to sick his cat on us or something? And um, Reed says, exactly. So this thing arrives to deal with them. So I'm not kind of going to read, just going to kind of narrate here because there's really um so while galactus is ass assembling uh this thing here to eat the planet uh these things fight with our heroes kind of to give it something uh some action basically and so here comes everyone else i like a borderless panel here and so our heroes are fighting you know, Bob Layton is a heck of an inker. I really love his inking, but his pencils really don't do much for me. But um, he does a really good job at Iron Man. Um, it's his specialty. I love especially the inks when uh, when he does these little um, things on metal kind of to create uh, light. So... But at the same time, here come the villains. So uh, while the heroes were fighting that thing, as soon as they take them down, here come the villains. So it's one thing after the other here. And so uh, Doom is glad that they survived their last encounter because it is uh, convenient for them to be there. Um, the villains fighting the hero... Um, allows Galactus immediately, uh, Galactus to sort of to be disturbed, and he says, a split second is all I need. So, Doom has some kind of plan here, which involves, of course, the villains fighting the heroes, and so you can see here, um, the heroes are kind of gashed from having to fight that thing, and so here come the villains kind of just more, but the X-Men have arrived and xavier says x-men attack press hard press them hard their powers exceed our own we must strike as one and so um xavier is giving um orders telepathically so look at uh, nightcrawler just um pulling her hair and wolverine fighting ultron so and then Rogue and Titania. So you can see she throws uh, something at her and Rogue punches it. So, and uh, like I said, I'm just narrating here. I'm not going to read all this parts here. But Storm is causing a storm. And suddenly Galactus becomes distracted. And Doom is like, now! And you can see him... Uh, Let's see here. Attack on speed. Doom's jump ship. 
so uh, Dr. Doom's ship goes up there. I just wanted to make sure here. And so here we go. The villain's fighting the X-Men. Look at this big optic blaster. Just sheesh. And so the heroes have won, but they're going to have to retreat here. Of course, Titania doesn't want to run away, but uh, um, Absorbing Man is like, shut up. And so um, they know that the enemy has left, but look at poor Colossus. And uh, so they're uh, leaving without him, and they're like, I don't like uh, this. How can we leave him? Get aside, Nightcrawler. The professor will explain. It better be good, Cyclops. I, for once, am with Wolverine. And so here is um, Galactus. Now, this ship is really big, which means that the ship is closer to us. So they're flying higher than Galactus here. So now I'm not a big fan of how Jim Shooter writes the X-Men. Uh, for someone, he just, um, there's like a real meanness to Xavier. Um and I don't know why um, he did it, but um, you can see here Xavier is explaining. Silence! Colossus' injuries were such that to move him would have killed him. There is a healer in that village who may be able to save his life. And I believe that Captain America and company can be trusted to do him no harm. As an independent ally of Captain America's group, we are extremely effective. I believe we should continue playing the role as a third force. To do so, we must keep our distance, even if it means leaving Colossus behind temporarily. Understood. And so here we go. The heroes are taken to the uh, healer. And of course, we've got um, uh, Iron Man helping poor Colossus. You can see... Uh, her and Johnny are kind of in love. And so... Um, and Colossus being like, I want no help. And... Uh, <laughs> which again seems... Uh, doesn't seem like that's, that's how they would behave. But we're almost done here. We got two pages here. And so again, they're kissing because it's part of the healing process. And... Um, He's he he knows the effects of Saji. He knows that if he tries to heal her, um, he's going to be even more in love. So Johnny leaves and she begins to heal him. And of course, he's like, oh, and so we get to the almost the end here. And he says it takes Galactus some time to complete the assembly cap. There's no telling exactly how long, though. And Captain America says once it's together, I presume he plans to consume the entire planet, probably destroying us in the process, finishes Reed, and thereby winning the Beyonders game. I doubt that it's that simple. Galactus is calculating. I'm planning, planning something. I feel it. And Cap is like, but what? And what is Doom up to? Why wasn't he with his little army when they attacked? Oh, missing a page. And so I got the page um, here. And... Uh, Doom is inside Galactus's uh, lair, and um, Doom, of course, is going to. Um, he's always he's always got a plan here. Um, I love how he refers to him the third person here. Um, go here. Hold. What is this? And the we get here next issue the way so secret wars number five jim shooter bob layton with john Beatty in the inks like and subscribe i do thank you for listening goodbye